Welcome back to the channel, it's Mark from Power Sonic and Apprentice 1 to 1 and we have another rewire we're on with. I've got Matthew and Nathan here with me. I'm going to spin you straight around and show you exactly what we're on. Uh, this is the house, so it's a lovely big garden, nice bright sunny day. We're in the middle of the Yorkshire Worlds again, countryside all around us. And I'll take you inside and show you what we're, what we're faced with. So there is some external lighting going on up here, but there's nothing too extravagant to be honest. Um, they just want a basic light over the door here and getting rid of this corner light show you in here to start with this is like a little workshop probably going to get converted at some stage um, but for the time being they just want us to pop a, a light and a socket in here there is this old light here um, and this place hasn't really been touched since the 60s maybe even earlier so you've got the old Bakelite light, light switch on the wall there um, run you around so I'll zoom out a little bit before we go in you can see we've got our setup of gear we're all ready to go Matthew and Nathan have been marking up um, this is currently a bathroom but it's going to change to a utility so we've got a washing machine point to get in there and all of this area has got a, a flat roof so we've got the issue of rooting cables which we're just figuring out the best way of doing it whether we're going to use the 150 zone around the top of the room or the fact the spotlights going in here we might be able to get a route across the ceiling void maybe open it up here and there we'll decide on that one in a minute um, yeah, Matthew's just done with marking that up. So this is the front room. You see there's quite a bit of furniture in here. This is all coming out before we start. There's actually a, a damp course treatment going on in this property. So the, the plaster's going to be taken off to a metre all the way around on the ground floor because they've had an issue with rising or penetrating damp or something. Uh, there's been a lack of central heating as well, which hasn't helped. So that's all coming off. Um, we're going to get our... Our socket points all chopped in in advance of that, obviously, because they're going to make the wall good afterwards and have the rooms freshly skimmed. There's no point that being done and then us coming in afterwards. So you'll see here we've got the sockets all, oh, camera got a wobble on there. Sockets all marked up, um, solid floors, so everything's got to come from the top. These Arctic ceilings have been tested, there's no asbestos in them, so we're good there. And uh, yeah, all of these walls are solid. There's no plasterboard walls anywhere, so plenty of chasing to get done. You can see in this corner here again, so in the corner of the room, we've got a chase to get a socket in there. There's another one in this corner as well, behind this unit, and again, this furniture's coming out. So yeah, you see that one up there as well, top to bottom. I'm gonna do a separate video that shows various different methods of chasing just while we're talking about that. So I'm gonna show some stitch drilling to chase out the socket front. Uh, I'm gonna use an angle grinder with dust extraction and then we will use the old fan. And I'll demo a few different SDS drills and the bits you can put in the end of them as well just to get different results. I'll show you uh, in a couple of the rooms upstairs different ways of tackling it and the outcome of them. But that's a separate video to this one. Uh, if you have a look in here at the bottom of the stairs, this is where the current electrical setup all comes in. So you can see there we've got the, the supply head coming through the wall into the service fuse. We have got this up front RCD on everything. Um, it then kind of splits off into the Economy 7 board there, and that's the little one here is for the Economy 7 heaters. Um, that's all isolated at the moment anyway, so it's not. Uh, in service, well I say isolated, they've not been switched on for months. So we've got all that to strip out, they're going for a, a central heating system now, I don't know if they've got an oil or a gas boiler going in, but we've been told the electric heating is no longer needed, they've got central heating, so we can do away with all of that. You can see this board here is very, very heavily corroded, um, that's providing power into the kitchen, and that needs to come out as well, obviously this one up there, so we're going to strip all this back and put a nice new consumer unit somewhere in this area, um, around the service head, probably on this end wall here, just below it, I would think. But we'll see, we'll see how that all comes together. Uh, there's not a lot upstairs, to be honest with you. And you can see Matthew's marked out here for the light switch at the bottom of the stairs. And at the top, we've got another light switch up here. Really small landing space where we're going to pop a smoke alarm in. And there's just the two bedrooms and a, and a little bathroom. So you can see you've got a light switch point on the wall there. And as we spin around, around, you can see we've got the sockets there for either side of the bed in this bedroom. And another socket just over here. 
for um, the hair dryer or whatever else you might want to use. So they're just the free sockets in this room, that's all the customers asked for. And you can see over the landing, it's a bit of a death trap this landing if you've had a few too many drinks, but over here we spin across and just as you come in the door there's a socket going there, light switch adjacent to the door, um, a socket here and a socket here. Obviously upstairs we are blessed with the timber floors so we can at least um, have smaller chases. The light switches are going to be fun because the pitch of the roof is um, quite tight to the wall there so that's going to be a bit of fishing down there I'm sure. Try and get the cables across. There is a little loft hatch but there's very very limited access. I'll show you in this bedroom. Now where is the loft hatch? It must be in the bathroom. Yes it is, so lock patches in the bathroom, um, but there's limited access up there, we're not going to be able to do a great deal. Um, we'll see if Nathan can wriggle up and uh, drop us some cables down here and there. We'll tackle that one when we get to it. Bathroom's quite simple, it's just a central light point going in and that's it. The um, shower's going off the boiler, uh, no shaver point or anything like that, so quite a simple install upstairs. So this is where I'll demo the, um, the chasing, I'll get some chasing stuff set up and record a separate little video to either been out before this or after this. That's the flat roof for the kitchen and the utility area. So obviously, you know, we're going to have to choose our routes carefully. Um, there is a lot of content on YouTube about safe zones and using them in the right way. Uh, we'll, we'll put our thoughts on this video of how you can do that. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll show a bit of that as well because we are going to have issues here and there. It's just the layout of the building. So again, that's a better look at the current setup. And um, we are going to have to stick our consumer unit somewhere there. I've gone for a fuse box one. Um, usually, as you'll have seen on my videos, we use Crabtree and Hager, but we couldn't get hold of the B32 RCBOs on that board. So I've had a little look around, and everyone seems to be going on about these um, CP fuse box boards. So we've got one, we're going to stick one in and review it on this job. We'll tell you what we think of it, honest of opinion. Gone for the mini RCBOs, we managed to get stock of everything from Electrical Expert. So that was nice. Um, to be able to just put an order in and have stuff delivered at the minute. I'm sure you're all seeing it with stock and things. It's a nightmare getting hold of stuff. The price of cables going through the roof. So it's just, it's really difficult, isn't it? When we're all trying to price our jobs and then uh, get on with doing the work when stuff goes up seemingly by the day and then you can't even get hold of the damn stuff either. So that's always a challenge. So we're gonna fire up the chasers, get the SDSs out. Um, I'll show how I set up for chasing. <coughs> Nathan's just going to demo putting his mask on because someone said it takes far too long to bother. How long is it going to take you, Nathan? Do you want to do it now? Yeah, stick it on. Okay. Apparently it takes too long to put your PPE on for doing a bit of drilling. That didn't seem especially long and the view for the rest of us has already improved. <laughs> so, there we go, it's, um, it's seconds. And when you're talking about silica dust and all the other nasty things you can be breathing in, it's just not worth risking it. If you're doing any kind of drilling or cutting, whether you're inside or outside, get your mask on. Um, there's no excuse, there really isn't. It's not worth chancing your health. So we've got a, a Ren kitchen plan here. Matthew's just uh, making sense of it onto the walls, making sure we get all our switches and socket outlets in the right place. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll jump on with a video now. I'll show you a little bit of how we're getting on on this job. We're gonna do this one as a as a whole so I will um, I'll cover this video as the whole job where we'll show just drop in as normal show bits and pieces of how it's all coming together and the progress we've made and um, separate videos um, in more detail because some of you have asked to see kind of how you how are, how we chase into walls and um, how we sink our boxes um, and things like that and I'm mindful of showing too much that people who um, shouldn't be doing electrical work can kind of copy and take instruction from YouTube. I said right at the start I don't want my channel to be that but I know that there are some apprentices who would value that content so we're going to do it in a little bit more detail but still be careful not to give too much instruction on how we actually do the wiring side of things I guess. So we'll show you a bit of the smashing and bashing on this as separate videos and um, we'll maybe chuck a time lapse in on the consumer unit on this one. I might do a separate video on that as well, we'll just have to see how it goes time-wise. But yeah, let's jump on with this and I'll drop back in when we've made a bit of progress. I'll show you the guys doing a bit of chopping and chasing and I'll get you set up on the tripod and show you a few different ways I chase out sockets in another video. So I've just shut the door on Matthew because he's making far too much noise in there actually working. 
Um, we're going for a fuse box board on this one and I've um, never used one of these before so it's a new one on me. I've seen loads of people using them across social media so I thought we'd give it a go. Uh, one of the things I do like straight out of the box is it's quite weighty so that's um, a good sign for me straight away that it's solid and good quality metal in there. Even the front cover you can feel there's a weight to it so it's not cheap, flimsy. Uh, it's all cast as well in one solid box which is something I like um, rather than the pressed corners you get on some of the other consumer units uh, you get a nice little grommet strip in there we'll see if that's any better than the, the Hager one that I don't get along with uh, there's a nice tails clamp included which is good and single mod module SPD but it does need um, its own MCB so yeah uh, it looks pretty decent out of the box we'll see how it goes on the wall I just thought I'd open it up and show you it um, these are the RCBOs, so we've got the mini ones, and we have managed to get stock of these, which is good. Uh, gone out of focus there. So they're nice, I'll get these all ready into the board so we can put it at the wall and then drop the cables straight in. I think the plan is we're going to go top entry, so we're going to pop this up and have a bit of trunking down across it um, and get a nice entry point, I think. We'll see how it all comes together once it's on the wall, I'll probably change my mind again to be honest. And another thing I like about these, actually we've ordered these separate, is the blanks, so they actually clip on the DIN rail. So while the Hager ones are DIN rail mountable, um, you kind of have to flick them in, it's hard to explain, but they work on TPN and SPN boards, depending on which way around you put them in. And so they're a little bit fiddly, they're a little bit awkward, they do go in, but you know, this seems like a simpler solution, so that's nice, seems like Fusebox put a bit of thought into that. And um, yeah, it's impressed, out the box. So say there is a good a good weight to it that's the thing i like about the crab tree boards as well they feel really solid and the fact you have to get um your muscles into action to knock the knockouts out on those crab tree boards is uh, brilliant we'll see how these ones come out uh, there's plenty across the bottom there there's a whole row of them across the top we've got a, a tails entry one in the side you can see there one on the other side as well so there's loads of entry points um but yeah i'll do a separate video of this installing it i think on a time lapse and I'll just show it in this video as we've got it on the wall as we move along. Um, yeah, let's get on with the video. So we've got a new run protect rod set. Um, this is from Electrical Expert again. I saw it on their website with a little sale on it. And it also had the benefit of the Bundy 10 code. So I've tre treaters to this nice new set. Our rods are all a bit worse for wear. They're several years old now and they're all a bit splintered and scrabby, scabby. So we've um, upgraded. We knew this loft space was going to be a bit tricky. So we've... Um, come prepared access to it's not easy and i'm sure we're going to be using these to get across there so um, nathan will be pleased with them later on so you've got the hook end little uh chain this big hooky thing i'm not sure exactly what that's for i'll have to have a little look in the instruction book you've got a torch and a normal hook and then the magnet which you can see is nice and magnetic which is always a good sign uh the rods of varying strengths so we've got nice strong rod red ones all the way down to the more flexible yellow ones um, and yeah nice bag to put it all in looks pretty decent we'll see for the quality um, i'm more used to super rod and ck with rod sets to be honest this is a new one on me so we're gonna see what they're like um give them a fair try some other bits and pieces that they've put in the nice book to show me all the stuff that i never knew i needed uh, we've got a nice inspection camera there's the fish tapes uh, these cable spoolers look interesting i've not seen those before so they look like they might be useful let's see how much they are and then the cable pulling tool so yeah i always get hooked with stuff like that to find out bits and pieces that i never knew i needed but anyway we'll press on with this video we'll show these in use um i'll see what they're like they look pretty strong the connector points so that's the big bugbear for some of the cheaper sets they don't always screw together nicely and they end up snapping off we'll see how these hold up they look pretty solid to be fair um, they're certainly a lot bigger than the ones we have on our current sets so we'll see see what they're like in use right i'll walk you around and show you where we're up to this is the way we came in right at the start so we'll, we'll go through it in the same order we've got this here at the side of the door and we've chased that in just with an sds gun because we couldn't get in with a chaser so that's um in ready for the light switch and there's an outside light going above that door there is a socket going in this under this window and this is a prime example with um, the horizontal chase argument um, some people don't like them to be honest they're an acceptable zone that you can use from any accessory there's nothing wrong with doing it um, even if you wanted to go across a room horizontally even if there wasn't a window in the way i wouldn't have a problem with it 
we go vertical where we can just because it's a, a little bit simpler to drop the cables through the floor rather than have to clip them all up along the wall it's just a faster way of doing it um, so there's them in there that's all ready there is a, a room above this this isn't part of the flat roof extension and again a little light switch down this end just a two-way one for this room uh, if we go into the kitchen as you can see we're all cleaned up there's no point hanging around in your own dust and mess we've got this here so there's going to be a power point for the cooker um, that's coming on its own radial it's just a two kilowatt oven so we're going to put an isolator up in the back of the cupboard there's a so the built-in ovens go in here and there's a cupboard above it so we're going to put a little isolator up there and also a single socket for a built-in fridge that's going at this side and that's what the customers asked for so they can um, defrost the fridge if they need to we've then got the the main cooker switch and its outlet down there so actually i've just realized we need to drop the chase in for that but we'll probably have to do that tomorrow now because uh, we've moved on some other bits and pieces we've got the extractor up here that's chopped in and ready to go and again there's a cupboard above the extractor where we're going to put an isolator in as well and then here we have got a socket drop down all chopped in another socket in this corner and a couple of sockets here this is an old chase from that socket there so that was the, this is why this is a little bit deeper there was an existing couple of sockets and a spare I think that's now come out and our sockets are a little bit higher we've gone off a different measurement than the original installers this isn't going to be a bathroom as we said there's going to be um, a dishwasher sorry a washing machine over here so we've got a, a socket from your wall cabinet at the top and then a below cabinet down here so we're going for a, a switch fuse isolator 20 amp isolator and a socket just in case customer wants to plug anything in and then down here we've got the outlet for the washing machine and then same in here this is remaining but it's not going to be a shower enclosure obviously you don't want sockets and switches in there but we're going to have a 20 amp isolator socket and then um, a low down socket switched off the isolator for a tumble dryer um, so that's going like that they wanted that on the side because they wasn't sure on the depth with the back of the tumble dryer so that's what we've done there's a bit of a gap there nothing in here this is staying as a downstairs toilet there's just going to be a pull cord and a light in there so we've got that to tackle when we get to that stage little light switching for this room here just as you walk in the door and then if we um go down this way and if it's just ringing the bell we've got the front room and this is all chopped out now so the socket going in the corner there there's another socket going in down there and we've just temporarily isolated these cables away because we wasn't sure where we were chasing if we were going to catch them so they've just been moved out of the way then we have got a light switch just dropped down here and another socket just dropped down here Matthew's getting in my way in this room there's a socket in this corner and again we've used the chasing gun on that i'll show you that when we come back downstairs uh, so that's straight down, nice and simple. Light switch as you walk in the door. Another socket on the wall here. And then light switch just as you walk in that door, socket down there. This is all still to be tackled. So we've got the existing stuff that I showed you earlier on in the video. Um, bottom of the stairs, we've got a light switch. It's all chopped out. This kind of exploded a bit. Some of it's rendered so far up and then it's plaster. It's all a bit of a mix and it just that's the way it goes sometimes when you're chopping in so we've got a lamp plaster board lamp plaster here so we're good on that wall light switch in this room socket here these are the sockets i demoed my chasing techniques on so there's another video covering all of this if you want to go and watch that you can show i did a bit of stitch drilling and used the thing on another and i just went through it with the sds straight away on another so you can see a few different techniques the brick here is pretty soft it's not really hard and the plaster's a nice depth as well so it's pretty straightforward to chase out again light switch here this is going to be a bit of a challenge so this is the the roof we've seen about there's a really narrow pitch to the top not a lot of space to get in but we'll get around it and then these last two sockets here chased out by me and um pretty tidy i would say nice and uh nice and neat so you're not blowing out any unnecessary wall because obviously if you're putting it right afterwards you're making work for yourself so it's worth spending a bit of time to get as neat a job as you can in my opinion uh, 
And yeah, that's like where we're at. All chopped out pretty much this morning. Um, done the kitchen a bit this afternoon. I'll just show you the chasing guns. So we just have a cheaper Titan chaser. Nothing flash or fancy like these Metabo ones that eat the wall up. So this does leave the material in to just knock out, which is no real hardship. And I'll sh I've showed that on another video anyway. But yeah, they leave a nice, neat groove for your oval tube to go in or however you want to dress your cables down to the accessory. And then the SDS guns, we've got quite an array of those. And again, showed them on the other video. So go and have a look at that if you want to see them in action and what they can do. And yeah, we'll start with the, the wiring now. We've got that cooker switch chase just to make the final little bit of mess with. We've still got the flat roof to sort out for the lighting and pulling the cables across in the kitchen. So we've got that to tackle as well. We're not quite there with the full smash and bash side of the job, but we're not far off and we'll get the cables all pulled in tomorrow um, and start putting it back together again. So I'll catch you a bit later on in the video. So best laid plans and everything, um, we've had a bit of an issue in the business and it's to do with that tiresome devil that we're all dealing with called COVID-19 and the pings of the apps and the positive test results. Um, and as a result, most of my team are now isolating, including me. So um, I can't get to site and get any more footage on that job. We've got to the stage where we've got all the cabling in and the uh, oval tube in, back boxes on all ready for the damp proofers who are still due to come and start on that job. So it is all in place and ready for them to go. At least we're not holding anyone up. We managed to get to that stage, which was a huge win for me because that was causing me a massive problem. Uh, so at least that's all sorted. Well, I can get back onto site next week at some stage, um, get some more footage of the second fix in. We're going to do a, a sample video of how we bond up the chases and get that all done. I'm going to do a, a video on the consumer unit, as I said before, in particular with the fuse box. Uh, brand so we can see how that all comes together and these will all be separate videos now I'm going to pull them all away into smaller sections because a lot of you have asked for some more detail on a lot of the stuff I'm putting out um, and I'm not going to show how I do stuff again because um, yeah that's not really what I want to be doing but I will go into a bit more detail on a few bits and pieces I think we can do that without instructing people on how you do this stuff so I'm going to make the effort see if I can put something useful together that'll be the end of this video for the time being so we're kind of up to the end of first fix on this one minus the kitchen um, when I get back to site, depending on where the few of us who were left who were able to work have got up to, we shall see and we'll pick it up from there. Um, and yeah, otherwise, thanks for watching this video. Please like and subscribe to the channel. If you've got any comments you want to drop in, please feel free to do so. There is also the video that should already be out, which is to do with the chopping and chasing side of things. If you haven't seen that, go and check it out. I build on some of the stuff we've spoke about in this video in that one. And um, yeah, part two of this will be bonding up second fixing 
and the consumer unit. And as I said, I'll pull a couple of separate videos off from that probably to do with the bonding, how we do that, and um, also the fuse box board. Otherwise, have a brilliant day. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support. And I will catch you all in the next one.